Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. And today I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of the image editor inside of GameMaker Studio 2. So we're going to be covering the basic layout and tool set, how to draw and use the tools, how to create your own brushes, layers, and animation. Let's go ahead and dive right in. To access it, you need to have a sprite inside of your project, double click on it, and then you can click on edit image or double click on one of the frames below. I'm gonna minimize the asset browser over here to give us more working space. The image editor is a fully featured and powerful creation tool to make your own sprites, both animated, characters, objects, whatever you're gonna need for your game, you can make it inside of GameMaker, and then it's right there, ready to go. So let's break it down piece by piece. The first thing we have is the frame view, which is up here at the top. It shows all the frames in your sprites, if it's an animated one, or just one if it's a single frame. And you can press play over here to view it. You can change the playback mode from loop to ping pong, and then just one playthrough when you press play. You have onion skinning, which allows you to see the frames before and after. And this is great for doing any sort of animation as it allows you to see where it's going and where it's been. So you can do the outline just like it's showing here, the outline exactly how you want to. And then you can also add new frames by clicking this plus button and it adds them at the end, but you can reorganize frames wherever you want inside of there. I don't want a blank frame, so I'm just gonna press delete on that and then turn off onion skinning. Below the frame view is the frame information. By default, it's hidden with this little arrow, so we toggle that and then it shows us the speed, the type of speed, and the current frame we're on. So this animation is set to 30, which is the default playback speed. I think it looks better at 25, so I'm gonna change that here and press play one more time. And there we go, I think that looks really nice. Now you wanna make sure that your image is set to frames per second, not frames per game frame. Otherwise, every frame, which there's normally 60, it's gonna play 25 frames. So if I press play now, you can't actually even see it going because it's so fast, it's faster than we can see and the computer can even pick up. So we want frames per second. And then underneath the frame information on the right is the canvas control. These are options for showing the grid, zooming in and out. You can also use the mouse wheel to go up and down. Mouse wheel plus shift goes left and right. And mouse wheel plus control goes in and out. But if you do all this, you can then press center to have it fit exactly where you want. And lastly is the split view. This allows you to have two canvases on the screen at once and you can zoom into one of them and then you can work on the other and see what's happening. So here I have a very microscopic view and I can choose exactly where to draw and I can see the results overall, which is really cool. You can have it be both vertical and horizontal split view. And then at the bottom, we have the editor values. The first ones here on the left are the X and Y. This is really useful if you need to know exactly where this is at or you wanna draw at a certain spot. Then you have the size and then some tips on whatever tool you have. This one, it says if I hold shift, I can actually draw a straight line, which is kinda cool. And then we get to the brushes, which is a really cool feature because we can actually make our own brushes, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a second. The default brushes here are one pixel uh, square, and then it goes all the way up to 31 pixels as a circle. And you can see that since this is a 128 by 128 frame, that the 31 pixel is pretty large, but up here, I can make it even larger if I wanted to, and then I can draw with that and have a nice white frame. Of course I don't, so I'll take that out. But those are the brushes that it comes with. Now to make your own brushes, you can come in here, and I'm gonna press S for select, and we're gonna to get to all these tools in just a minute. But if you press S, you can select something, and then Control C to copy it, or Command C, and then this becomes your own brush. So if I add a new frame here, I can draw with this just like you would any other brush. So you can hold it down and draw it like that. And you can do this for any image, anything inside of your sprites or frames, you can make your own brushes. And this can be very, very powerful if you know what you're doing. As an artist, I don't know what I would do with this, but 
the power is there and it is ready for you to use. And then underneath brushes, we've got colors. So this is a huge color palette and it comes with a predefined set of colors. But one of the really cool things that Game Maker allows you to do is to create your own custom palette and then actually share that with other sprites and images inside of your game. This is great when you have a color palette that you want to be consistent across your entire game. So say we were going for an 8-bit or 16-bit color scheme, you can choose the colors here by double-clicking, and then you can type in your hex value, or you can change it to RGB up here if you want, and you can select a color. So I'll change this to a nice green, and now you can see the first color is green. If we want the second color to be white, the second color is now white. And this is gonna stay on this sprite and on this image for the duration that you have it in this game. And then if you bring up any other sprite and image, you can click on this and you can import the colors from one or copy the colors from another. This is a great tool to, like I said, have one custom color palette that you can share everywhere. And down here are the most recent colors that you've used, and you can click on one with left click to change it, and then you can also do a right click, so you can have multiple colors working at the same time. And you can see that the brushes also grab those colors, so you can change the hue of any custom brush that you have as well. And below that is the toolbox, which is where we're going to spend most of our time, because there's a lot of different tools here. So I'm going to change brushes. Now, the main tool we've been using is the draw tool. You left click and it draws something. Very simple. Next to that is the erase tool. And this one is dependent on the size of the brush you're using. So here I have a one pixel eraser. So it might take me a really long time to erase this. But if I grab my really big eraser, then I can just erase the whole thing nice and easy. Next, we have the fill tool, which is really useful for filling in an area, but it fills in an enclosed area. So what I mean by that is I'm going to come over here and press D. So every tool over here has a shortcut key, which I encourage you to learn. It will save you a lot of time. If we make a square or any shape really that is closed, so there's no way to get out of this, and I press F for fill, I can then fill in this specific area and this specific area with that tool. So fill is great and powerful, but it only fills in that area that is free. If we come over here, there's actually a lot of slightly transparent pixels. So if I try to fill this in, you can see that it doesn't really fill in very much because there's a lot of pixels that you can't actually see there that are very, very light, but the fill tool would not work really well here. Like the fill tool, we have color remove and color replace. Color remove does exactly what you'd expect it to. You choose a color and it gets rid of every exact match of that color. This one has a lot of different hues of all these oranges, whites, and yellows. So when you click on one, it might not seem to remove all of the same ones, but it is. There's just a lot of variations in color in this one frame. But you can see that it's really great for getting rid of one color in particular. Next to that is the color replace, which does the same thing. If I wanted to make this explosion blue, I could start going through and clicking on all the white and have it be blue instead of white. And then the next four tools are for drawing specific shapes. So we've got draw line, rectangle, ellipse, and polygon. I'm gonna explain each one because they are a little bit different. The line tool is pretty simple. You just press and hold and it will do a pretty much straight line as straight as it can in that direction when you release. Then the next three have two different ways you can use them. The top part is going to create an outline. The bottom half is going to create a filled shape. So here, this is just going to make an outline of a square. If I click on the bottom half, it's going to create a filled square. Same thing for the ellipse. Those are exactly the same kind of tool. But the polygon tool is a little more interesting. If you left click on this and then you click anywhere else, it's going to try to match those up but you can keep on clicking to make any kind of shape that you want inside of here. And it just adds another point and then it connects those points. Very cool, very powerful. And then there's the arc tool, which is very similar to the polygon, except now if you hold down your left mouse button, you can actually have this be different shapes 
and have it be more elliptical than straight. Then we have the text tool. This one allows you to put text into your image. So, hello world. And there we go. You need to press escape to commit the tool change and it stays there. If you make the size larger up here, so like size 20, you can change the font and the style. But if you make it larger, it's a little bit easier to read. The smaller it is, the more transparent it is. I don't want to save this one, so I'm going to click no this time. Any text you put into your frame or your image is going to be permanent. That means that you are not going to then be able to edit it. So if you want to put text in an image, make sure that it is exactly what you want or it's easy to change. I do not recommend putting it over something you might want unless you're using layers, which is going to be the last thing we touch on and we're almost there. Next up, we have the color picker. So you just choose any color and it adds it to your palette. Then we have the select tool, which we've already shown how to use, but if you select something, you can copy it or cut it, but you can also then grab it and move that portion around. It'll grab exactly that amount and move it where you want. The next couple tools are very similar. They just grab things differently. To unselect something, press escape. And then we have the paint selection tool where I can just hold this down and I can select all of the stuff right around here, and then I can move that portion. And then comes the magic wand where you can select one color and it's gonna grab all of the same color around it, and then you can move that selection as well. The last four are all about rotating and moving and altering where your sprite itself actually is. So we have this selection and I clicked on the rotate tool, and now we can rotate it. You can also rotate it directly up here with a specific amount, which is a little bit easier to do. And you can choose whether it interpolates or not. And when you're done, you've got a new brush up here with that rotation that you can use anywhere you want. Then you can also flip the brush tool vertically, horizontally, or just move around an image inside of there. And that's all the tools in the toolbox. And the last thing to talk about is layers. Layers allow you to create a complex image one piece at a time. So here we just have one layer, but if we add a second one, we can now add something to this layer and it will not affect the default layer. So let's add that text back in. And let's say sometimes you wanna see this text and sometimes you don't, you can click this little eye to make it disappear. Maybe you only wanna see the text you can make the default layer disappear and all of the explosion is now gone. Layers are a great way of building images, especially sprites and characters that have multiple layers, such as hats or outfits. They allow you to create each one on its own layer and then you can modify that specific layer as you're working. And that's a rundown of the image editor inside of Game Maker Studio 2. It's everything you need to make powerful, fully animated, ready to use images and sprites for your game. And that's what I've got for you. Thank you so much for joining me. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.